Hello everyone, you are welcome to class and as you can see today we are going to discuss Greek criticism and here we have some topics like Plato and Aristotle. Uh, two people we must know in order to understand Greek criticism. So here are the notes for you. Uh, first we will be talking about uh, Plato, the first systematic critic and here are some short notes for you when he died and other and what were here uh, his ideas about you know imitations and other things so let me go down here i will show you some uh, more topics uh, so that you can have some idea what we are going to discuss in this video so you can see uh, poetic inspiration and imitation what he has to say about imitation this is quite important topic in order to understand you know the future criticism even in modern uh, literature when you will you know go through that and poetry what was his ideas so, and uh, as some of the people requested me that okay just uh, discuss things in English only so I will just come down with English uh, sorry with Hindi and I will uh, use more English uh, in this you know whole lecture uh, hopefully all will I will try to use for uh, you know use simple words to un make you understand uh, literary theory and criticism for those who are from Hindi background and they are just restarting you know English literature you will understand each and everything if uh, you listen to it completely so here are some ideas you know Plato's views about poetry and this is important uh, part for uh, your later crit criticism topic and one more thing if you wish to have all these notes uh, you can directly contact me on whatsapp and you can join this course uh, in just uh, 250 and this complete course is cost is too low 250 you can you can join this course in 250 only so let's come to the first you will get all the PDFs there all right if you join this course there uh, you will get all the PDFs so let's start from here Greek criticism and Plato so you can see 427 and 387 uh, BC and uh, Plato the first systematic critic so first thing about Plato is he was the first systematic critic so there are some key points we must know like he was the first systematic critic and before him if we see that okay there is a question in our brain that uh, is there anyone uh, who was before Plato so it was the epic of Homer you can see and the frogs of Aristophanes uh, there are only some lines in in these works uh, but Plato Plato was the uh, you know most significant person who started uh, criticism so later however it was uh, only Plato who made criticism vital force so here is the key point he made it vital force and Plato was the first conscious literary critic who has put his ideas in a systematic way in his work dialogue. So uh, here is a work dialogue in which he put his ideas and that's why it was the first work we can uh, call and here from, from this point from the point he wrote dialogue literary criticism became uh, you know a vital force and it has become systematic before Plato nobody could do that so he was born in 427 BC and his parents were distinguished Athenian poems uh, these poems he wrote first wrote but destroyed all right so there is one fact about Plato that he despised uh, he hated points later in his or he criticized the poetry later uh, but first he wrote some poetry but he destroyed why he destroyed those um, mm, those poems he destroyed them just because he was influenced by Socrates and actively became interested in mathematics and philosophy because he thought mathematics and philosophy was uh, you know useful in day-to-day -day life and poetry was not uh, useful that's why he destroyed and later he uh, framed his own ideas on this uh, on this particular topic 
now if we talk about his academy he founded an academy here uh, in 387 now his works dialogue dialogue mein, uh, dialogue mein unhone kuch work likhe the there were some works in dialogue like eon lysis georgias and symposiums these were his great books and phaedrus and republic so you can you can uh, mug up these facts for your uh, exams now he died in 347 bc eon and Rep uh, republic especially book 10 because this is important and uh, some questions are asked from this uh, this book so in this part he has expressed his views on poetic inspiration imitation and his condemnation of poetry so if we talk about eon and republic then there are some things that you keep in your brain First thing is poetic inspiration he talked about. Second thing is imitation he talked about. And third was, uh, you know, why he condemned poetry. So why he condemned poetry, we will uh, um, uh, talk about this topic under four uh, subtopics later. So first is poetic inspiration. What he has, uh, has to say about poetic inspiration. He expressed his views in Eon. For the poet is a light and winged and holy thing and there is no invention in him. So, what is important here? This, this part is important. Uh, first question comes from uh, this part like where he mentioned this thing. So, it was in Eon. Second thing uh, can be asked like uh, who has uh, spoken these words about poetry? And fourth thing you can, you can be asked like uh, about what it was uh, you know talked so it was talked about poetic inspiration by Plato in Eon and this is quotation by Plato so such kind of questions you can ask for uh, yourself and that will help you in your preparation so invention in him until he has been inspired and he is out of his senses and the mind is no longer in him when he has not attained to this state he is powerless and is unable to utter his oracles. Not by art does the poet sing, but by power divine. So what he wants to say, he wants to say, uh, po Plato wants to say, poetry comes with power divine. And he described poetry as pure inspiration, a notion which survives even today with modification. So we can see that the uh, idea that the poetry comes from a divine power so this is also known as people today Plato here says nothing about poets lying but one thing is that the poet is lying means poet is lying about it and he didn't say anything about it so if we look at the given work of school of abuse and which आंसर में सिडनी ने अपना वर्क लिखा था इट वाज यू नो स्कूल ऑफ अब्यूज द वर्क एंड द अनदर वर्क सिडनी हैज रिटन इन टू आंसर गिवन अच्छा सोक्रेटिस ऐसे भी SPA <coughs> Okay, it was stopped. Now how we are here. Uh, so some important works by Aristotle you can see here. Dialogue on monarchy uh, monarchy and natural history organum or the instrument of correct thinking rhetoric logic educational ethics and nicomassian ethics physics metaphysics politics and poetics so one thing uh, sometimes we forget like uh, you know first was socrates second was plato and third was aristotle okay so next one is uh, some here are some uh, important notes Aristotle the first scientific literary critic so first systematic was Plato but first scientific literary critic was Aristotle remember this 
the poetics a short treatise of 26 chapters he wrote and it was just in 45 pages introduced the renowned concept of catharsis ye aapne kafi baar suna hoga ye wala word aap jo abhi just start kar rahe honge ya kuch exams dete honge tgt pgt ke sochte honge ki ye catharsis word kahan se aaya hai so it was introduced by aristotle and concerned mainly with the greek philosophers theories of tragedy or and he has talked about tragedy a lot so you will see later that we will discuss this um, in detail so there was a plan he has uh, written in his books so in first part the poetics is divided uh, divided into six parts so there are six parts you can see uh, in first part you can see intro remark on poetry classification and tragedy and comedy so uh, in the first part he is talking about poetry and he is talking about classification uh, tragedy and comedy now i will just show you how it was done devoted to tragedy the second part was devoted to tragedy third part was poetic diction what it should be this is his style and vocabulary it was in three chapters narrative poetry and tragedy was the next part the epic and compared it was compared to tragedy and in the last examines the objections of critics against poetry and answer like we have gone through plato that he had some objections related to that <coughs> the poetics and the tragedy now we will talk about this uh, and this is important part of this video uh, the poetics is concerned chiefly with tragedy which is according to aristotle is the highest poetic form so remember this thing that he considered tragedy the highest poetic form and this is asked in several exams why tragedy is different tragedy different kyun hai according to uh, aristotle imitation is the common basis of all the fine arts but they are different from each other in their medium of imitation so there are three parts he have uh, talked or three medium he talks about so first was the medium of imitation second is the object of imitation and the next one is their manner of imitation so all the uh, arts he he tells that the base is imitation whatever art is there but there are three kinds of imitation he talks about first is or uh, we can say their basis uh, what are the basis so first is their medium of imitation their objects of imitation what they are uh, trying to imitate and manner of imitation how they are trying to uh, imitate things so first is uh, poetry so in poetry he talks about epic and dramatic here so on the medium of imitation medium can be could be so medium it was na it narrates epic narrates things and dramatic uh, you know poetry it represents through actions so here in dramatic you can see tragic and comic and uh, it was on the base objects of imitation now aristotle traces the origin and development of the poetry and poetry in beginning so here how it is how it started iams and invectives were the first part then it developed into satiric part and later it became comedy and here he tells that first it was hymns of panegyrics and epic and heroic poetry then it becomes or it gets changed changed into epic and heroic poetry and later it became tragedy you can see here tragedy is superior because all the parts of an epic are included in tragedy so jo bhi part epic mein hote hain wo sare kya hote hain tragedy mein hote hain but those of tragedies are not all of them to be found in epic lekin jo tragedy ke sare part hote hain wo epic mein nahi hote isliye unhone kaha hai that's why he is saying that tragedy is superior and some of uh, you know ideas you must know in order to uh, you know solve some questions there epic lacks music epic mein music nahi hota there is no music in epic according to aristotle and epic lacks spectacles uh, people are not there to watch that tragedy has reality of presentation uh, tragedy mein hum presentation kya hoti hai reality ka presentation hota hai tragedy has unity of action unity of action ke bare mein hum baad mein baat karenge 
ट्रेजिडी में यूनिटी ऑफ एक्शन होता है इसमें पूरा एक वीडियो बन सकता है यूनिटी ऑफ एक्शन में डेफिनेशन यू मस्ट नो द डेफिनेशन ऑफ ट्रेजिडी अकॉर्डिंग टू एरिस्टोटल द इमिटेशन ऑफ एन एक्शन सीरियस कंप्लीट एंड ऑफ अ सर्टिन मैग्नीट्यूड हियर दीज थिंग्स आर आस्ड इन एग्जाम सो ही टेल्स दैट ट्रेजिडी मस्ट हैव अ सर्टिन मैग्नीट्यूड इन अ लैंग्वेज ब्यूटिफाइड इन डिफरेंट पार्ट्स विद डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ एम्बेलिशमेंट through actions and not narration uh this should be uh, with actions like uh, just we were talking about here let me show you again that that part mm, here <coughs> epic narrates and dramatic uh you know poetry it represents through actions so there must be actions he is talking about actions in uh tragedy and in poetry he talks about narration so through actions not narration and through scenes of pity and fear bringing about the catharsis here uh, he he brought a term uh, you know into english literature or in literary criticism and that was catharsis uh, and of these or such like emotions two parts of the definition first part of the definition was from the imitation of action and not the narration and second this part i have made these uh, two parts for you second part is the part is concerned with the function and emotional effects of tragedy uh, this definition distinguishes tragedy from other forms of poetry so here are some you know from the the same uh, i i have broken into pieces that definition first is its object of imitations are serious action and so it is different from comedy and serious means wavy and impro important wave and important it must have some weight that that action it is different from epic which narrates and the last one the third part is on the basis of its medium it is different from the lyric it employs several kinds of embellishment in different parts uh, that is words in dialogue and songs in choric parts the plot of tragedy and is its structure so aristotle says an ideal plot must have nature its structure should be there and it should be constituent and tragedy is the representation of action and action consists of event plot is arrangement of these events uh, plot is the soul of tra tragedy so these are ideas um, by aristotle and uh, six formative elements of tragedies are plot character thoughts melody diction and spectator so he talks about you know the six elements you must remember this and three kinds of plots he talks about first is na uh, simple and second is complex he d uh, simple plot does not have a uh, parity and anagnorisis second is complex plot it is ideal tragic plot according to aristotle so sometimes questions are asked like um, uh, which plot is preferred by aristotle aristotle kisko prefer karte the to wo complex plot ko uh, prefer karte the must have peripecia and anagnosis unexpected to cat catastrophe so agar aap logon ko ye words nahi pata to aap uh, channel par dekh sakte hain i have explained these uh, all the words a uh, plot based on uh, depicting incidents of of suffering uh, so this is the third kind of so first was simple pl plot uh, second is complex plot and third one is plots based on depicting incidents of suffering so uh, let's talk about some other topics here what he tells about the plot plot is not a story second is means according to aristotle plot is not a story it is made through a process of artistic uh, selection and ordering incidents chosen must be serious and weighty so it should be serious hum hame ek serious se kya karna hai ek incident lena usi ko hum tragedy mein convert kar sakte hain like to arouse tragic of some importance emotions pity and fear aur jo tragedy honi chahiye usme kuch important emotions hone chahiye प्लॉट मस्ट बी कम्प्लीट अ बिगनिंग मिडिल एंड एंड उस प्लॉट के बारे में एक बात कही आ, कि इसमें एक बिगनिंग होना चाहिए एक सर्टेन मैग्नीट्यूड का मिडिल होना चाहिए और एक फिर एंड होना चाहिए 
ट्रेजिडी डिपिक्ट्स आ चेंज फ्रॉम हैप्पीनेस टू मेजरी और जो ट्रेजिडी है वो हैप्पीनेस से मेजरी की तरफ चलना चाहिए अ मिडिल इज समथिंग दैट इज कंसिक्वेंट अपॉन अ सिचुएशन दैट हैज गॉन बिफोर एंड फॉलोड बाय अ कैटेस्ट्रॉप और उसके बाद कैटेस्ट्रॉप वहाँ पर होना चाहिए अ मिडिल मस्ट फॉलो नेचुरली अपॉन बिगनिंग और जो मिडिल पार्ट होना चाहिए वो बिगनिंग को नेचुरली फॉलो करें अ प्लाट मस्ट हैव अ सर्टन मैग्नीट्यूड ही मैग्नीट्यूड मीन्स साइज और प्लाट का एक अच्छा खासा साइज होना चाहिए एक अच्छा खासी उसकी मैग्नीट्यूड uh, होना चाहिए जिससे कि उसको अच्छे तरीके से uh, हम परफॉर्म कर पाएँ जो जो भी उसे परफॉर्म कर रहा है वो उसे अच्छे तरीके से परफॉर्म कर पाए हमारसिया पैरिपेशिया एंड एनोग्रेसिस ऑल हैंग टुगेदर इन द आइडियल इसके मिठाइजेशन ऑफ द ट्रेजिक प्लॉट एरिस्टोटल तो ये सारी चीज़ें उसमें हमारसिया होना चाहिए पैरपेशिया होना चाहिए एनेग्नोरोसिस होना चाहिए और ये सारी चीज़ें जब हों तो हम उसे एक बेस्ट प्लॉट मानेंगे हमारसिया आई हैव रिटर्न हियर इन शॉर्ट दैट हमारसिया इज अ ट्रेजिक एरर और मिस कैलकुलेशन ऑफ द हीरो रिजल्ट इन बैड मोमेंट सो समाइम्स वट हीरो डज ही मिस कैलकुलेट द सिचुएशन एंड दैट बिकम्स यू नो द बैड मोमेंट फॉर हीरो और द प्रोटैगनिस्ट पैरपेशिया फैटल वर्किंग ऑफ प्लाट एनाग्निस रिकग्निशन ऑफ द ट्रूथ सॉरी एनाग्निस इज रिकग्निशन ऑफ द ट्रूथ सो यू कैन रिमेंबर दीज थिंग्स फॉर यू नो योर शॉर्ट नोट फोर इसेंशियल कैरेक्टराइजेशन ही टॉक्ट इन इन हिज बुक द कैरेक्टर मस्ट बी गुड इन ट्रेजिडी इफ वी वॉन्ट टू यू नो अराइज द सेंस ऑफ पिटी इन दी स्पेक्टिकल्स जो देखने वाले हैं उनके अंदर एक सेंस ऑफ पिटी अगर हमें जगानी है तो हमें एक अच्छा कैरेक्टर ढूंढना पड़ेगा हियर गुड मीन्स हैविंग गुड वर्च्यू सच एज करेज मैग्निफिशियंस टेम्परेंस लिबरलिटी एंड फ्रेंडलीनेस लाइक यू हैव सीन इन ऑथेलो एग्जाम्पल लेके चलेंगे साथ में तो ज़्यादा समझ में आएगा तो वो कहते हैं कि एक जो ऑथेलो है लाइक like, वो कैरेक्टर से गुड अच्छा इंसान था उसके अंदर अच्छी वर्च्यूज थी सो so, जब हम उसका डाउनफॉल uh, देखते हैं तो हमारे अंदर कहीं ना कहीं उसके लिए एक पिटी का सेंस uh, आता है सेकेंड द कैरेक्टर मस्ट बी अप्रोप्रिएट और कैरेक्टर एक अच्छा अप्रोप्रिएट होना चाहिए कैरेक्टर मस्ट बी ट्रू टू टाइप एंड स्टेटस जो उसका टाइप और स्टेटस है उसके लिए वो अच्छा होना चाहिए दैट इज़ वुमेन मस्ट बी वुमेनली लाइक वुमेन वुमेनली होनी चाहिए जैसा हम उसमें डेस्टिम ओनर को देखते हैं तो वुमेनली थी सो दैट्स वाई वी यू नो उससे ज़्यादा हमारे दिमाग में दया आती है उसके लिए भी कैरेक्टर्स मस्ट हैव लाइकनेस और कैरेक्टर में लाइकनेस होनी चाहिए दैट इज़ दे मस्ट बी लाइक अवर सेल्फ और ट्रू टू लाइफ और वो बिल्कुल हमारी तरह बिहेव करें तो हम ज़्यादा उससे कनेक्ट कर पाएंगे कैरेक्टर मस्ट बी कंसिस्टेंट दे मस्ट ऑफ देयर ओन नेचर्स दस इज रैश इम्पल्सिव पर्सन शुड एक्ट रैसली एंड इम्पल्सिवली सो कैरेक्टर जैसा एक बार हम दिखा दें उसको उसी तरह से उसे थ्रो आउट उस वर्क में हम उसे दिखाएं तो ज़्यादा हमारे इमोशन क्या कर पाएगा अरोज कर पाएगा नाव वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट ग्रैको रोमन क्रिटिसिजम ओनली सम पार्ट वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट एंड देन इन डिटेल्ड वी कैन गो इन अनदर वीडियो सो इन फर्स्ट सेंचुरी दिस सेंटर ऑफ लिटरी एंड कल्चरल एक्टिविटी शिफ्टेड फ्रॉम एलेक्जेंड्रिया टू रोम यू नो दैट ऑल वर फ्लैट फ्रॉम एलेक्जेंड्रिया टू रोम एंड द कैपिटल ऑफ रोमन एम्पायर ऑगस्टन एरा वॉज फ्रॉम थर्टी वन बी सी टू फोर्टीन ए डी अ गोल्डन एज फॉर पोइट्री एंड लिटरी क्रिटिसिजम ग्रेटली लिटरी फिगर्स ऑफ द एज वर वर्जिल ओवेट ट्रैवलर्स एंड हॉरेस हॉरेस वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट इन टॉकिंग अबाउट हॉरेस इन डिटेल वेरियस फैक्टर्स विच हेल्प द फ्लावरिंग ऑफ एक्टिविटीज वर किंग ऑगस्टस सीजा वॉज द ग्रेट लवर ऑफ आर्ट एंड लिटरेचर जब किसी आर्ट को कोई एक पैटर्न मिल जाता है तो कहीं ना कहीं वो वो फील्ड बहुत ज़्यादा ब्लूम करता है बहुत ज़्यादा सक्सेसफुल हो जाता है ही पैटर्नाइज मैन ऑफ लेटर्स जो मैन ऑफ लेटर्स थे वहाँ पर उनको उन्होंने क्या किया था पैटर्नाइज किया था दिस वॉज एन एरा ऑफ पीस 
and there was an upsurge in nationalism romans wanted to excel as greek and some poets were uh, degrading so there was a great need of criticism uh, some great poets came from naples who had studied greek literature like virgil uh, important i have um, made it a note the current literary problem whom to follow a uh, greek or modern alexandrian so that time there was a problem like there was uh, you know a confusion that whom to follow uh, should we follow greeks or should we follow modern alexandrian virgil and horace pleaded for the study of greek classics aur jo virgil aur horace the unke dimag mein ye tha ki hame greek classics padhne chahiye jisse hum zyada se zyada cheezon ko seekh payenge so this is the end of the lesson today hopefully you learned a lot from this so don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video with others thank you for watching see you in next video